Jannah. Myself and the one who looked after an orphan, looked after the orphan. He didn't want anything out of that besides looking after the child because the child had lost a father. We will be like this in paradise. And he showed the two first fingers. He brought them together. So subhanallah, what an amazing way of entering Jannah. You did your deed, subhanallah. When it was most difficult, you put a scarf on your head for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it was extremely difficult, when people perhaps, you know, mocked at you, laughed at you, when perhaps at work you were threatened, at school you, this happened to you, and so on. But you still said, no, that's my identity, subhanallah. Who knows, perhaps that might just be your deed. That might just be the final block that would be your entry into paradise. Can it not be? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May we be resolute upon that which will grant us paradise. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. It's the small deeds, the little deeds that will give us paradise. Let's take a look at the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Jannah. And he speaks about those who believe. And he never ever says those who believe will go into paradise. It's not good enough to say I believe. If you believe, prove it. Prove it by working upon it. Let's see what you're doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is why he says, Am hasibatum an jannah. Do you really think you are going to go to paradise when certain things have not yet happened to you? What hasn't happened to you? Do you really think you will go into paradise when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not yet tested you to distinguish who from amongst you is sacrificing for the sake of Allah, has struggled for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who from amongst you is patient and forbearant upon that which Allah has chosen for you. So you need forbearance, you need patience, you need beautiful deeds, you need really good deeds. And at the same time, every time Allah makes mention of Jannah, He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ Those who believe and do good deeds. For them, they will be the ones who will earn Jannah. They will earn paradise. Subhanallah. This is Jannah. It is not only achieved by saying, I believe. You need to do it. You need to act. You need to do deeds. You need to earn it. And this is why when the Prophet ﷺ was once asked by his companions, what are the deeds that will drive the maximum number of people into Jannah? Good question. I want Jannah. Fast track. I want Jannah quickly. So the people who will be in Jannah, what would have got them to Jannah? Please let us know. He says, Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Two things. The consciousness of Allah and good character. The fulfillment of the right of Allah is called Taqwa Allah. Or it could be encapsulated in the term Taqwa Allah. You're conscious of Allah. You fulfill your obligations unto Allah. Wahusnul khuluq means good character. It means your treatment of the rest of humanity. Whoever else is there as a human being, you have good character towards them. You speak to them with humility, no matter who you are. At the end of the day, when you came to this earth, you were totally naked. And when you leave, you shall leave similarly, without any dollar or cent with you. But everything you've spent has been written for you or against you. You need to know this. Whatever I've achieved in life is written for me or against me. But I'm taking none of it with me. It's actually how I spent my time on earth that counts. Amazing. So how are you spending your time on earth? This afternoon, we have come in order to learn knowledge. Let me tell you something about this afternoon. We have come here to learn knowledge. Do you agree? Say yes loudly if you agree. Okay, listen to the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Whoever has walked upon a path, trodden down a path, whoever has walked through a, a road, whoever has come towards knowledge, a path that leads to knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make for them, because of that, the path to paradise very easy which means to seek knowledge is fast tracking your entry into jannah to seek knowledge remember this hadith and don't forget it man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahhalallahu bihi aw lahu bihi tariqan ila al jannah 
Whosoever treads the path that leads to knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it will make easy his or her path to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with paradise and may he make it easy for us to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really open our doors. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim and it is reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, the one that I've just mentioned. And the previous one where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa speaks of the two characteristics of those who will be in paradise, prevalent characteristics. It's a hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa speaks about those who will be in paradise. Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. Don't forget this. So some of them will be there because of taqwa Allah. Some of them will be there husnul khuluq. Some of them a combination of both. We hope that we can get there at least with something. Take a look at a woman who was feeling the sense of mercy towards a dog. Towards an animal. And she decided, okay, let me quench the thirst of this dog. And Allah says, and we've been taught this. That as a result of that compassion, subhanallah, Allah forgave her and told her, okay, Jannah. That's why I started the session by saying, Allah's looking for any excuse to give you Jannah. Let that excuse come forward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us really to do deeds as many as possible. Let's make mention of some of these deeds. To be kind to your parents and to serve your mother can fast track your entry into Jannah, according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you take care of your aging mother, if you take care of your father, you will be granted paradise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be granted paradise by Allah on condition that the intention is there. You're a believing person who is trying. That's what it is. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was faced with an individual who wanted to go out into jihad, he asked him, he says, are your parents alive? He says, yes. He says, well, go and serve them for in their service is paradise. That's a correct narration. Serve your parents. Why is there paradise in serving your parents? Can I let you know the truth, my brothers and sisters? Because it is very, very difficult. Your mother gets to 80 years old. She can talk whole day and tell you things that you don't like. That is your Jannah. That's what it is. It's not Jannah to just go so easy and say, okay, my mom, I can't stay with you anymore because you know what? You're quite tough to look after. That's what the Jannah is. When it becomes tough and hard, that's your mother. Don't forget. Keep quiet. She can tell you what she wants. Excuse her. You don't need to respond. So the reason why Jannah is given by serving your parents is because it is difficult. It's not so easy. It's something really that requires great patience and effort. It requires a great sacrifice to serve your parents. When they served you when you were young, subhanallah, there was a big difference. So subhanallah, when our parents looked after us, we were young. When we were young, they, they carried us, they took us, they changed our nappies to word it respectfully. And they made dua that we have a long life. And when they are old, what do we do for them? We only need to listen to them. We, you know, they're not going to pee on us, subhanallah. You, it, maybe sometimes we might need to cart them along. So they carried us too. And at the same time, we should never be making dua to Allah to say, Oh Allah, I'm looking after my mother for the last 15 years. When is this going to stop? Allahu Akbar. No, 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 no. We need to say, oh Allah, grant her Jannah, grant her goodness, grant me Jannah through the service and sacrifice well, that I have been making for my own mother. Subhanallah. This is Jannah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Jannah through that deed as well. Another powerful block that you can build. And this is literally a block to build. That is to build or to contribute towards the building of one of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as a masjid. The hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari reported by Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh. He says, Man bana lillahi masjidan, bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. That's one of the wordings, but the wordings are all quite similar. Whoever for the sake of Allah builds a house, a masjid, Allah will build for him a house in jannah. You have a house in paradise. Now, I believe not all of us are so wealthy that we can afford the $3 million masjid that is about to be built somewhere, perhaps. But at least we can contribute by one brick, two bricks. And do you know the mercy of Allah is such that when he knows that a brick from this whole building came from you, he's not going to say, okay, here's your brick, but you go to hell. No way. <laughs> your brick, you're going to come to Jannah and you will have an entire house. Because Allah is so merciful. He will multiply it 700 fold and even more. That's the mercy of Allah. So this is why if you cannot afford to build a whole home for a whole house of Allah, meaning the masjid, at least contribute towards it. At least 
do something that, that will result in the goodness, the house of Allah being elevated, so on. Serve on it, call people towards it. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be able to achieve much. Let's look at yet a beautiful way of earning Jannah. It's a struggle, but it's beautiful. The hadith is so lovely. The Prophet ﷺ guarantees Jannah to a person who can guarantee him the correct usage of two organs. May Allah forgive us, may Allah grant us goodness, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to control our tongues and our private parts. He says, Whoever guarantees me the correct use of what is between their cheeks and what is between their thighs, I guarantee them a place in Jannah. Subhanallah. Watch your tongue and watch how you use your private parts. It's a direct, clean-cut hadith. It's open. Like we said earlier this morning, we don't need to be shy when it comes to earning Jannah, the straight path. We need to know it. We need to talk about it. So that is loud and clear. We hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens our doors. Let's go back to the masjid, to the house of Allah. There is another block. When we say block, we're not talking of blockage. We're talking of building blocks, bricks. Okay? To build your Jannah. The hadith says, whoever goes to the masjid every morning and evening, walks to the masjid every morning and evening for every step that they take. And obviously, if you're going with your proton by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for every time the wheel spins, I would say, you would have your place in Jannah being decorated for you, subhanallah. Your abode in Jannah is being made clear for you, subhanallah. Imagine, just by going to the masjid. So make it a habit, my beloved brothers, especially, to go to the house of Allah. Make it a habit to go there whenever you can for any salah. May Allah strengthen me as well. If you go early morning, you go in the afternoon, in the evening to the house of Allah solely for the sake of Allah. He says, I know you've come to my house. I will prepare you a house in the hereafter. That's a hadith. Also in Sahih Muslim reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Then for those who have wealth, mashallah, you can go for Umrah and Hajj. You know how beneficial that is. Al-Umratu ila al-Umrati kaffaratu lima baynahuma wal hajjul mabruru la jaza'a lahu illa al-jannah. The hadith says, when you, con when you make Umrah more often, Allah forgives the sins between the two Umrahs. So I made one now, I make one next year. It does not mean let me sin as much as I can between the two Umrahs because I'm, you don't know if you're going to make it back there. But it's speaking about the minor sins that you may not know that you've committed. You become cleared between the two Umrahs. And as for Hajj, the same hadith, the hadith reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, the Prophet ﷺ says, as for the Hajj that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has no reward besides Jannah. What more do you want? It means the ultimate reward for a deed is actually paradise. In this world, you may suffer, you may struggle. Part of your fast tracking into Jannah is to bear patience upon what you have been inflicted with or the condition Allah has kept you upon. Take a look at a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about the blind people. And you know what he says? He says in Sunan At-Tirmi, there's, there's a hadith where Rasulullah ﷺ has said, whosoever bears patience upon the fact that Allah has taken away their eyesight, Allah gives them Jannah in return. Not for their blindness, but for their patience. So if someone cannot see, not only at the beginning of your life, look, a lot of us, sometimes we grow a little bit older and sometimes, subhanAllah, we know the older people, some of them, they fail to see at a certain time. Allah says, if you are patient with that, it's not easy. It's not a joke, subhanAllah. If you are patient, if you thank Allah for the other countless things He's given you, and you say, oh Allah, this one thing you haven't given me, but I still thank you for everything you have. Allah says, in return for that, and the beauty of your heart and the sabr, we will grant you paradise. What a beautiful way of earning Jannah. Let's take a look at another way of earning Jannah. The hadith speaks of a man from the previous nations who was granted Jannah solely because he used to forgive those or give time to those who owed him money because he was a rich man. And whenever he used to send his debt collectors to those who had to collect the debts on his behalf, he would tell his debt collector quickly, hey, look, if you come across a poor person who's struggling, leave him and go to the next person. And the, the, the debt collector would say, why? He says, 
Let's forgive him, perhaps Allah will forgive us. Subhanallah. Let's give him some time, perhaps Allah will give us respite. So Allah says in this hadith, reported by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلَقِيَ اللَّهَ فَتَجَاوَزَ عَنْ When this man met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forgave him. Allah said, you know what? You forgave others, so we are forgiving you. You earn Jannah. This is why my beloved brothers and sisters, I want to mention a powerful incident, but just in two lines. When Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was faced with the accuser of his daughter, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, someone accused her of committing adultery and whatever else in terms of dirt that they had accused her of. Na'udhu billah, may Allah safeguard all of us. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu made a promise and he said, I'm never going to spend on this relative of mine who happens to spread, spread the tale. If you spread tales, you are blocking your chances of going to Jannah. If you have pride and arrogance, you're blocking your chances of entering paradise. But in this case, you are asked to forgive someone who has really wronged you. A lot of us don't forgive. I don't want to forgive, but they haven't really wronged you. You are wrong sometimes. I don't want to forgive him. But who knows? In the court of Allah, maybe you are the one who's wrong. How do you know? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was told, وَالْيَعْفُ وَالْيَصْفَحُ أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَن يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Surah Nur, what a powerful verse. Allah says, learn to forgive. Forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? So then forgive others. It's something that's not easy. Not easy to forgive others. Try and condition your heart to a, to a point where you do not hold it against anyone. You are so satisfied. Even those who have tried to crush you, they only get goodness from you. Like a rose. A rose leaves the strongest scent on the heels of the one who crushed it. If I just smell the rose, I get a scent. But if I really want, I must tear it apart, break it pieces, crush. Then I get, ooh, smelling good. But I just broke it. I just crushed it. I just destroyed its life. Well, let's take a lesson from that. Subhanallah. Have your heart such that you have a link with Allah. Oh Allah, if I get to Jannah, I don't mind what these people are doing to me now and here. For as long as I get paradise, that's it. That's what I want. This is the path. This is the, the path we want. If I get paradise, even if you tell me that your worst enemy has to be your neighbor, are you ready? You got to say, yes, I'm ready because there he's not going to be your worst enemy. He's going to be your best friend. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Just keep on saying Ameen. The reason is, we don't know when is the moment of acceptance of dua. So I like to keep on repeating these dua so the Ameen must come in so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us Jannah. May He grant us Jannah. Oh, mashallah. Ameen. 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 So, my brothers and sisters, that was another brick to build our paradise. One of the ways of earning Jannah. Let's look at yet another one. Did you ever know? That by you going to visit someone who is sick or ill, you are already earning a spot and a position in paradise on condition that you're doing it for the sake of Allah. Did you ever know that? Why? Because to make someone feel good and to pray for people who are struggling is actually a godly act. It's an act of goodness. And this is why the hadith says, when the Prophet wasallam speaks about it, it's powerful. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the people on the day of judgment that, I was sick and you did not visit me. And the person will say, well, how could you have been sick when you are Rabbul Alameen? You know, it doesn't make sense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, didn't you hear that my slave so-and-so was sick and ill? Well, had you visited them or him or her, you would have found me there. Which means it would have drawn you closer to Allah. Your chances to enter Jannah have suddenly multiplied. So there are clear cut a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that speak about earning paradise through visiting the ill and the sick and reaching out to the destitute and those who are perhaps underprivileged. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Similarly, another powerful building block is when you greet each other with assalamu alaikum genuinely. If you are genuine, and you really mean what you say, you can earn Jannah. Did you know that? Well, here's the hadith. It's a powerful hadith. And it's there in most of the books of hadith. Hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. He says, 
he heard the Prophet says, nas, O people. Now the end of the hadith speaks about entering paradise. And I'm going to tell you the end before I tell you the beginning so that we can put it into perspective. At the end he says, if you do these deeds, you will enter Jannah with ease, with peace. Tadkhulu Jannata Rabbikum Bisalam. You will enter the Jannah of your Rabb, it belongs to Allah, with ease, with peace. So what is it that he said you should do? Well, listen to the deeds. Ayyuhannas, O people, afshu salam. Spread the peace. The peace means the greeting, assalamu alaikum, as well as the peace as in the opposite of war, the opposite of fighting, the opposite of all these, you know, this turbulence that you have. Sometimes it's on a small scale in your home between siblings. Sometimes it's husband and wife. May Allah safeguard us. Sometimes it is parent and child. Sometimes it is relatives, laws and in-laws. I don't know why the law has to come into that all the time. But anyway, the truth is, if you say, Assalamu alaikum, you are saying, may peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and his blessings. If you are genuine, you won't harm that person because you just made a dua, may peace be upon you. But now I'm at war with you. So that's hypocrisy. Like I said moments ago, we rather be honest and people then figure out that, okay, it was worth it to be honest than to pretend like everything is okay. And when you go, you're so upset. So you greet someone, Assalamu alaikum, oh my sister. And you know, uh, I, it's not a brother giving a sister a hug, but two sisters, subhanallah. And they're giving each other a big hug. And at the end of the day, you know, come straight into the back. Why did you even say salam? Why did you bother? You want Jannah to be fast tracked for you. Just be genuine. When you say Assalamu alaikum, don't harm. Don't backbite. Don't gossip. Don't enter into their lives in a negative way. Speak good about them. That's it. Speak good about someone behind their backs. And you will find... Allah will grant you Jannah. So even if I have something negative to be said about you, I don't need to say it to people. I can complain to Allah. No ghibah when it comes to Allah. Oh Allah, the sister, this is what she did to me. The brother, this is what he did to me. There's no harm because that's my Allah. He owns me and owns you. I'm complaining to him. But don't say, oh Allah, destroy them, break them, paralyze them. No, 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 not at all. Say, oh Allah, ease the situation. Soften their hearts. Grant them goodness. That is more godly. That is the quality of a believer. I said, oh Allah, soften the heart. So the hearts are softened. But when I say, oh Allah, break them. <laughs> Who knows? They might be on the same path. And while they're being broken, I'm affected also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us. You know, if you're living in the same building and say, oh Allah, destroy their home. And suddenly the building comes crashing. And then you're told, okay, that we were just destroying the home there. But you don't know yours is destroyed in the process. So we don't want that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really, we need to think. So the Prophet Sallallahu says, when you say salam, say it genuinely, say it properly, say it with a heart. And this is why we don't like it when people just come across and say, you know, and that's it. What did you say? You just heard the kum at the end, you know, say it properly. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And respond because it's, imagine, you know, they say, and this is something we learn. The first impressions are the lasting. Do you agree? Imagine someone meets you and they say, may the peace of Allah be upon you. And his blessings and his mercy. The non Muslims will be taken aback. Look at how this was worded. But for us, we've just kept it on our tongue. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And you don't even know what you're saying. There's one brother who greets me all the time, and he, the only thing I hear is Atu at the end. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I say, What's going on? Subhanallah. May Allah make it easy. When we are genuine with the way we say it, we will be genuine to protect each other. So I'm guaranteeing you that I won't harm you and I will protect you as best as I can from harm. And I'm asking on top of that, that Allah blesses you and has mercy on you. And the uh, malaika are saying, oh Allah, grant this person the same. Did you know that? The angels are saying, oh Allah, grant this person the same. I'm saying, may the peace of Allah be upon you and his mercy and his blessings. And the angels are saying, oh Allah, even this one, give him, give him the same. And whose dua is more powerful, mine or the angels? That's for you to figure out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah grant us Jannah. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recipe. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam alayhi salam. Look at that. She said, 
that how will I have a child? How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about this story is that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind. really come to understand that to be a Muslim